I think most Amish communities have recognized that this is a world of technology and we all have choices. We all choose where we want to live and how we want to live. So how does a community figure out what technology is okay to use? Some of the communities are actually having a difficult time deciding what's okay and what's not. Half the church might say, well, I don't have a problem with this, and the other half may say, oh no, we're staying with our traditional beliefs and we're not going to ever go outside them. We have this image of the Amish as being frozen in time, stuck somewhere around 1850, completely abstaining from technology and anything else that belongs to the modern world. But that's not quite right because new economic pressures are leading to new debates within Amish churches about just how much to let the outside world in. Here's something that may surprise you. By some estimates, the Amish are the fastest growing faith community in America. The Amish number over 300,000, and that number is predicted to hit 1 million by 2050. At the same time, Amish families are picking up and moving across state lines. Every now and then you're going to get um, what some people would call seekers. A lot of people come in with a romantic notion of how much fun it's going to be to dress in more old-fashioned clothes. Let's dress like they do on the prairie. We're just going to live like they did, you know, a hundred years ago. Well, that wears off awful quick. Sherry spends part of her year in Pennsylvania, the beating heart of Amish country. The Amish live what's called a plain life, but the boundaries of plain can be blurry. So like within 10 to 15 miles, you could have electricity and an automatic washing machine. You could go 10 to 15 miles away and you're going to have solar, kerosene lamps and batteries. And then you could go over the hill and there's not even going to be so much as a refrigerator. With communities like that, the more old order communities kind of judge a community like yours or a lifestyle Oh, like absolutely, yours. they would judge. In some areas, that friction is becoming more acute. As Amish communities grow and American farmland becomes expensive and scarce, more Amish people have to find work off the farm in the big technological world. Does the church always kind of set a standard for what's allowed? Yes, the bishops mainly do that. They have a meeting like once a year and then they decide, well, hey, are we gonna let this in? They really don't like any technology, but there's much more in here than they realize. Case in point, Sherry's friend Wilma has electricity at home, but it's powered by solar because her community is not okay with public power grids. Similarly, her neighbors won't own cars, but they might hire non-Amish drivers to get them around. There's this one professor who calls this maneuvering around the rules Amish hacking. I love that iPad. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Some Amish churches let people use technology for business, but once you have a taste of it, it's hard to put away after work hours. Do you think it's hard to know where a community should draw the line, or do you think it's kind of clear? Yeah, it is. It's hard to know. And the technology, um, a lot of the men and the boys get into porn and that kind of thing. But increasingly, some Amish people are seeking out more relaxed standards. In short, they're going on winter vacation to Florida. Pinecraft is a kind of destination hotspot for Amish and Mennonite tourists. In Pinecraft, you can get away with things you couldn't do elsewhere, like riding bikes. What happens in Pinecraft stays in Pinecraft. That's a fact. There's actually some communities where I, I could even go so far as to use the word forbidden from coming down here. They would view this as more a playground and it's not something that they want to participate in because the lifestyle is so different. It is, you know, I don't want to say let your hair down because that's not something that you're ever going to see. So I just say that figuratively. Sherry's daughter lives in a Mennonite community near the beach. So just recently, a group of ladies and I got together and started a podcast. I want to reach that word of God as far and wide as I can. So I use the internet in ways like a podcast or Instagram, Facebook. It's really interesting. So it's like, I guess there could be two perspectives on that. A more, you know, conservative group might say, oh, well, it's against God's word to use the internet. But then you're saying, well, we can use the internet to share God's word. That's right. The thing is, the Amish have been here before. Back in the 1860s, Amish leaders held a series of conferences to decide how much Amish culture should bend to modernity. 
Hardliners thought the technology would weigh people down, prevent them from ascending to heaven. In response, the church split. Different communities took different paths. In our lives, it can feel like technological change is inexorable. There's always more and more and more is always better. But here's this community that says, well, no, we're gonna take this, but not that. And I wonder if we don't all crave that kind of control sometimes. I guess from the outside, it can be a bit confusing and it can feel a little arbitrary, like why embrace an iPad, but not mass produced clothing or why embrace a washing machine, but not a tractor. They might have to do a little research and you know, just do a little, little searching of, is that something that I want to introduce in my life? Where is it going to take me? I guess when you get to a place where, you know, you have Amish communities like yours where you can ride cars and you can ride bikes and have iPads and electricity. And then I wonder, you know, is the boundary between Amish and not Amish kind of blurring? Wow, Katie, that's yeah. a really good question. I had never thought about that before. If you don't already, subscribe to NBC Left Field. And if you liked this story, check out another Left Field film about another group of people who choose to leave the modern world, this time to live in the wild.